What's up, guys? Uh, I, I don't even know what to say, man. They do this every year. Every time you think the Lions are good, they lose a big game like this, and they play like crap. We have first-round picks not doing anything. We have Aiden Hutchinson, who wasn't even on the freaking field today. Gibbs didn't do anything. So Jalen Carter would have looked a lot nice. I think Carter could get some pressure on the quarterback, unlike anybody else on this freaking team. Um, Jack Campbell didn't do anything. That's three years of first-round picks that did nothing today. Sam Laporta was nice, but you get the point. And then you sign a bunch, draft and sign a bunch of people with injury risk, with injury history, and look what happens. Everyone gets hurt. We're thin. we got to rely on Jerry Jacobs, who should be cut after this game, to do something. Guys, this is indifferent. It's better than it was, maybe. I mean, we're not Matt Patricia bad anymore. That's good. But is it really different from the early 2010s? You know, when we were somewhat good, but not quite good enough to break the ice? And the answer is no. This team's afraid to take risks. This team's afraid to take chances. You had a brilliant opportunity to take a golden goose egg of a first-round pick in Jalen Carter. But you got scared away by a news headline and said, screw it. Instead, you draft a running back at 12 who admittedly did nothing today. In fact, he ran a wrong route, which resulted in a pick six. I mean, we're closer than we've been, but you know what? We, I don't think we succeeded this offseason. I don't think we did. The second round picks were good, but who else was good in that draft? We gave away all our late round picks, and look what happened. We have no depth on this freaking team. Aaron Glenn is calling the same crap. Tight ends getting open in the flat every play. Like, what's gonna, when's this going to change, guys? And Pete Carroll owns us. Pete Carroll owns the city of Detroit right now. You might as well give him the freaking keys. Pete Carroll owns this team. He owns Aaron Glenn and Dane Campbell. I, knew, I, I, had, a, I had a weird feeling this was going to happen because this is what the Lions do, but I thought maybe this team is different. No, it's not. Last week was a fluke. This week, this week the other team didn't actually give us the game. And you know what, Can I might, I might hate to say this, but Kansas City might not be as good as we think. They were struggling with Jacksonville a little bit, and their left tackle is horrible. And Aiden faced a backup left tackle and did nothing. Same with Houston. Same with anyone else on this freaking defensive line. So, I, I don't get it. It's almost like Brad Holmes was thinking, I want to be the smartest guy in the room, and Jalen Carter's not a culture guy. Well, you know what? <laughs> the culture's pretty good in Philadelphia right now, and I think Carter really helped him win. And, boy, having Swift would have been nice, too. You know, after Montgomery went down, you don't have many running backs on this freaking team. You still got, you could use Swift on his rookie deal right now. If you were going to trade him, you don't accept a fifth-round pick. And if you were going to look for his replacement, you don't draft him in the first round unless you're sure he's elite, which I'm sorry to say Gibbs is not elite. He's got great speed. That's about it. A lot of people in the NFL have great speed. I'm not ready to hang it up and say this team is toast. They're not. They're going to compete for a postseason spot. But is this the ceiling of Detroit football? Because we had a golden opportunity this past offseason to drastically improve our roster, and we didn't. Instead, we've still got defensive players like Jerry Jacobs running around like a chicken with its head cut off that don't know what they're doing. We have a pass rush that's non-existent. We have a defensive tackle group that gets blown off the ball. We have linebackers that are clueless. And our offense, again, had to play almost perfect football, and they made some, some mistakes today. Oh, yeah, and we decided to re-sign Vitae and, instead of cutting him, and guess what? He gets hurt again. A lot of guys get hurt on this team. Maybe when you keep signing injury history guys, that happens. I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. And then Dan Campbell completely mismanages the game again. You know, that last drive right before overtime, you need to be going for the touchdown. You don't rely on overtime, ever. I hate overtime in the NFL. 
and then going forward in certain situations, stupid. You give Seattle the ball right back at midfield. And you know what? Maybe you should have kicked in a couple of situations. Fourth and four in the first quarter, you kick, you take the freaking points. If it's fourth and one, I get going for it because it's a higher probability of getting it. But fourth and four at the 30, you take the points every time. Every time. Except in very certain situations. But you absolutely take the points. We need more star power on this team. We don't have any, I don't think we have any real superstars except for Panay Sewell at left tackle. Uh, even Hutchinson, you know what? Honestly, he lucked his way into some sacks last year and today was a bad game. I mean, I, I like the guy. He's a Michigan guy and I'm not saying he's bad. He's not trash, but how good is he really? We're going to find out this year because if you really go back and watch some of his tape last year, he did have some nice wins, but... There were a lot of games he was non-existent, and you expect him to take a step forward this year. And honestly, this game he was a no-show, absolute no-show. Pete Carroll owns this team, and this team—I don't even think—I don't even know if this team's going to win the division. Green Bay is looking good. I mean, it's not as hopeless as it was in the past, but it's like this team never every. The Lions have had several opportunities in their history to break the ice and finally emerge as a contender, and they never do it. Early 90s, you know, you have Barry Sanders, you have teams going 10 and 6, 11 and 5, or whatever, 12 and 4, whatever the heck it was. You don't sign a quarterback, you don't build an offensive line around him. You draft, you draft trying to be the smartest guy in the room. Like, I'm, str I'm really struggling to decide whether this is different or not like it feels like it's not different yet this part of it does feel like it's different but this is a horrible loss and it's deja vu all over again against a team that's not that good it's pathetic embarrassing in front of a bunch of raging fans gotta win next week or this this could be a long year and I probably not six and eleven or five and ten, maybe eight and nine. But you can't let this be the ceiling of your team. And you know, if you're talking about extending golf next year, you're gonna need re you're gonna need to sign some more guys because it's clear the guys we signed aren't doing anything. Some of the guys we drafted also aren't doing anything. This is a horrible, horrible loss. Unacceptable.